Hi and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to share some budget-friendly vegan meals that uh, I don't have recipes for for this video. It's going to be more of a like what I eat in a day style video. Um, but I'm going to be sharing a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner meal or meals that uh, are super easy to make, super affordable, and they don't take a lot of time. I guess that's sort of a theme of mine. I like food that doesn't take a lot of time to prepare. Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to share sort of like a more realistic view on things that I eat every day as opposed to it just being like, here's a recipe, here's a recipe, here's a recipe. I don't have recipes for any of these th three meals at the moment. Um, dinner's a little bit more like, make all these things and then put them together on a plate. It doesn't really have instructions to be a recipe anyways, but uh, that makes it really easy. So if you like that, stick around to the end of the video where you see me make dinner, because that's a really good one. So anyways, let's just get into breakfast. So for breakfast, I'm making chocolate peanut butter banana oatmeal. So I'm just going to cut up a ripe banana. I usually buy a bag of the ready to eat bananas when I go grocery shopping because we eat a lot of bananas and eat them pretty much every day. So it helps save a little bit of money as well as helps produce less waste from the grocery store. So I just cut it up into small pieces and then portioned off a larger size, which I'm gonna cook into the oatmeal and a smaller amount to throw on top afterwards. So now I'm just going to boil some water with a little bit of salt. I'm only making one portion of oats for myself, so I just used about two-thirds, maybe a little bit more than two-thirds of a cup of water. I just brought that to a boil with the lid on the pot so that we didn't lose any of that water. And then here I'm adding one-third of a cup of large flake oats, and so I'm just going to cook those for about... In total, I think it's about 15 minutes, but before I put the banana in, I usually cook it for about 10 minutes. So then I added that uh, large portion of bananas. I added about a tablespoon or so of peanut butter, a tablespoon of cocoa powder, a tablespoon of maple syrup, and then I'm just going to stir that to mix it in a little bit. It does need a little bit of liquid as well, so then I added in two tablespoons of soy milk. And you could probably use just one tablespoon of soy milk or water or whatever kind of non-dairy milk you like. I just find the soy milk makes it nice and creamy, which I really like for my oatmeal. So that's breakfast. I used to really not enjoy oatmeal, to be honest, but there's a few things now um, that I've tried with oatmeal and this particular recipe where it's like really chocolatey, I'm back to enjoying it a little bit. I used to like it a lot as a kid. I can't eat it every day but it's something that I like to eat, especially when I am trying to budget my meals a little bit because this recipe is so cheap, so easy, um, and that's my favorite thing about it. So I'm just gonna add in the rest of my bananas, some chopped walnuts, that has lots of good omegas in there. And this is optional, but I like to top it with a little bit of cinnamon, so. Just gonna sprinkle a bit of cinnamon on there. And that's it. And that's breakfast. That's so good. I don't have a recipe for this up on my website. I probably won't be putting one up right away, but eventually I'd like to try some more things with um, oatmeal, some different flavors, and then I will be putting some up once that's all finished. So now I'm going to eat this do some work, get some stuff ready for school, which I'm gonna be starting um, in a couple weeks. And yeah, I'll uh, tune in back at lunchtime. So on the day that I filmed this video, it was a little bit cooler out. So I decided I wanted to have soup for lunch. Um, again, I didn't follow a recipe, but that's one of the things that I like a lot about soup is you don't really need to. You kind of just cut up the things that you like to go in soup and then toss it into a pot add some spices and some water or vegetable broth and that's about it. So I just uh, kind of small diced a bunch of different veggies. I did red onion, garlic, carrots, mushrooms, and celery. And that's sort of a, a typical base I think for a vegetable soup. So I just cooked those in a pot with a little bit of olive oil. 
and uh, I know the pot looks really dirty but it's just because it's our popcorn making pot and sometimes the popcorn burns to the bottom but I've scraped it and scraped it and I can't get those off so it's not getting into the soup but it's uh, it just makes the pot look dirty <laughs> I promise so I added a little bit of salt and pepper to the veggies and just cook those down a little bit then I added some white kidney beans which I really like in soups and I added some dried thyme, parsley, and sage. And so these spices make it taste a little bit more towards like a chicken soup. I think it's the sage that kind of adds a poultry sort of flavor. Um, and then I added onion and garlic powder because I always do and some paprika. And then I just added a little bit of lemon juice and I let those cook in the pot um, until they got fragrant. Then I added in my vegetable stock, so I just used veggie broth that I got at Superstore and a can of diced tomatoes, including the liquid, because that's going to add a little bit more liquid to our soup base. And then this I just wanted to get up to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer, cover the pot and let the vegetables cook until they became tender. So after about 10 minutes, I decided I wanted to add in some noodles, so I just added a little bit of fusilli noodles, and then I also added in some roughly chopped kale. I kind of just pulled it apart more with my hands until it was a size that I wanted in the soup. Not very big, just kind of bite-sized pieces so that it wouldn't be overwhelming and you wouldn't get a huge chunk of kale in each bite that you took. And then I cooked the noodles for about probably five or five to seven more minutes and then the soup was done and I enjoyed it while I did some work calculating the cost of each meal and its servings based on the prices of the food on my grocery receipt and you can find the prices of each in the description box. I pretty much just worked for the rest of the afternoon and then I decided to make dinner which I wanted to make sort of like a Buddha bowl. Uh, me and my boyfriend like to eat those a lot, so for those I like to just roast a bunch of veggies, uh, some tofu, and make some rice. So here I cut up a bunch of sweet potatoes into cubes, and then I'm just chopping up some broccoli into like medium to large size florets. I don't like it to be too small because it's going to shrink down quite a bit when you cook it. I'm also cutting up some cabbage. I like to cut my cabbage just into wedges and then toss on some olive oil and salt and pepper and it's a really tasty way to make cabbage when you roast it in the oven like that. Um, it just gets really soft, tender, juicy. It's really great flavors. I know my boyfriend really likes to eat it with some soy sauce on it and it just tastes amazing. So then I'm adding a little bit of olive oil just to everything on the pan, some salt and pepper. Sometimes I will do some onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, you know, the typical uh, pantry spices that I use a lot in my videos. But today I was feeling a little bit lazy. I kind of wanted the flavors of the vegetables to stand out. So I didn't add anything else to those. So next up, I'm just cutting up a block of extra firm tofu and this is the kind that sits in water and I'm just going to take it out, cut it into pieces and then drain it a little bit by dabbing it with a paper towel. For this, I don't like to be too finicky about the sizes. I kind of just want my tofu to be in like medium sized cubes. It helps it get nice and crispy when you bake it in the oven and I'm also going to be adding a little bit of barbecue sauce to it so it allows more flavor to coat the tofu when it's not in super big pieces. So first I drain them while they're in larger slabs and then I'm just cutting them in half to make about eight cubes of tofu per person. To dress the tofu to make it nice and crispy when you bake it, I just added a little bit of olive oil and tossed them to coat them all equally. And then I added a little bit of cornstarch. And again, you can add a little bit of seasonings too if you want. If I'm gonna have this in like a stir fry or curry, sometimes I'll add ginger, uh, garlic powder, 
but today I just did the olive oil and cornstarch and then added barbecue sauce when it was just about finished. So we're going to cook the tofu in the oven just as it is to start. It takes about half an hour, 15 minutes on each side. And so we're gonna cook that with the vegetables and do all of it together. Now here I am just shucking two pieces of corn that I got. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a summer flavor for our bowl. I ended up shucking two pieces of corn but then we only had one and just split it in half. So I've got two at the beginning here, but I only end up wrapping one in the tin foil. I like to make my corn by either steaming it or boiling it, or uh, my favorite way is to just add a little bit of vegan margarine and some salt and pepper, wrap it in tin foil and bake it in the oven with the rest of the veggies or on its own for whatever meal I'm gonna have it with. This is a really great way to make the corn stand out and keep the flavors in. It gets nice and steamy inside the oven. So here I'm just making room on my pan, sticking it in the oven. We're gonna cook all of this at 415 for about 15 minutes. Then we're gonna take out the tofu and we're going to just give it a little flip. You can already see it's starting to get nice and crispy, toasted. It's going to be firm and crispy on the outside. Then I'm taking my veggies and I'm just going to give those a flip as well. Really, I only have to flip the sweet potato and the broccoli because the wedges of cabbage are sitting up. So that means that both sides are going to get brown in the oven. It's a good little hack. You can do it with potato wedges too. If you put them skin side down, they'll crisp up on both sides and take a little bit less time to cook as well. So here I'm taking the tofu out after the full 30 minutes. I flip them and then put them in again for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to remove them from the pan back into the bowl that I coated them in with the cornstarch and olive oil earlier. And I'm going to add a little bit of barbecue sauce. We really like the bullseye bold barbecue sauce or the chipotle flavor. Um, that's just a great brand of barbecue sauce. If you're looking for one, definitely a favorite in our house. And I'm gonna put that back on the pan, which I'm going to then stick back in the oven just for about five more minutes until the barbecue sauce becomes bubbled and stuck to the tofu and we've got a nice glaze on the tofu. So now I'm gonna plate. I'm gonna add about half a cup to a cup of brown rice, which I just cooked in my Instant Pot. I'm gonna add our crispy broccoli. The broccoli does tend to cook faster than the rest of them, so sometimes it can get a little bit too crispy if you don't like that. Take it out after the first 15 minutes, it'll be just as good. Then I'm adding my sweet potato chunks. Definitely a favorite part of the plate. We love roasted sweet potato in our house. And a couple of pieces of cabbage. You can see it got nice and brown. You can see a division between the layers of cabbage. Everything on the inside is gonna be nice and soft and toasted on the outer layers. Next up, I'm adding the corn to the plate, which I just cut in half after I cooked it. Then I'm going to finish it off with the barbecue tofu. You can add a little bit more barbecue sauce at this point if you want, but no matter what, I would recommend eating it right away because if you let the tofu cool too much, it will become slightly chewy. It's still good, but it's nice and crispy when it first comes out of the oven. Okay, so that's everything that I ate today. Leave a comment, let me know what you ate today, and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me in the future. If you like this video, um, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more recipe videos, just let me know, and if there are any recipe ideas that you'd like to see, again, you can leave it in the comments or find me on my Instagram, and I'll have links to my Instagram, Facebook, and my website in the description box. Thanks, bye.